Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. Today, Dwayne Taves talks with Dick Gehring with the National Bison Association. He talks about how imported water buffalo is being labeled as buffalo and how as a consumer, you can make sure you are buying true American bison. On today's Kansas Farm Bureau update, meet Jackie Munt, who talks about how important it is to support candidates that support Kansas agriculture. Then Dwayne Taves talks with Hannah thompson Weeman about the Animal Agricultural Alliance and what role it plays in the industry. Next, Daryl Peel from Oklahoma State University talks about recent cattle market turmoil and what changes might help with the next disruption in the supply chain. And to wrap up the show, it's Plain Talk with Kyle and Dwayne. It's all coming up on Farm Factor. Stay tuned. These days, no one can afford to take the risk of being without financial protection against high health care costs, not even for a few days. Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans offer short-term health care coverage to fill in those temporary gaps. Short-term health plans can provide you with medical coverage when you are between health plans, helping lower your potential financial risk. Learn more at kfbhealthplans.com or contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you. Looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're going to find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back to Farm Factor. Up first today, Dwayne Taves talks with Dick Gehring with advice on how to tell if you are buying true American bison. Dwayne Taves joining you once again on the program. An opportunity to catch up with Dick Gehring from Moundridge, Kansas with the National Bison Association. Dick, we think about uh, issues within agriculture and industry, uh, truth and labeling. Uh, there's a lot of different industries that are feeling pretty strong about that. Bison uh, has its own particular issue that maybe some folks wouldn't necessarily think about. Yeah, we have. Uh, in the last several years, we've had an influx of uh, imported water buffalo coming into the country. Uh, it's first showed up in the pet food sector. and. Uh, it has now kind of creeped into the human food sector as well. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is uh, while maybe they're not doing anything um, illegal, if you will, uh, ethical, ethical considerations are another, another story. They're simply calling the product buffalo instead of water buffalo. Uh, we don't have a problem with them bringing it in and, and selling it, but we need them to tell the whole story. Uh, you show a picture of a bison to probably 95% of uh, the U.S. citizens and ask them what it is, they're going to say it's, it's a buffalo. And so some of the ways that that, that shows up is uh, if they use 3% of an ingredient in their product, they're able to u utilize that ingredient in the advertising. So maybe they have a picture of a bison, call it something else, you turn over the label to see what the ingredients are, and the number one label, the number one ingredient on the label is buffalo, and then down around number nine or ten is roasted bison, and the number one ingredient was actually water buffalo, and they didn't call it that way. USDA has um, provisions in the verbiage to, to, to not allow that to happen, but um, under import, that's all, that's all come, that all comes under FDA and they don't have that verbiage. So we've been hard at work uh, in D.C. and Senator Hoven out of uh, North Dakota and Senator Bennett out of Colorado introduced a bipartisan bill. Um, they're looking for you know, support for that. 
to to have a truth and labeling uh, law, which would take care of that. We think about uh, the product is uh, significantly different uh, for all intents and purposes. When we think about a bison or buffalo that has been raised uh, and grain fed in many cases here in the United States uh, versus an imported product of water buffalo, typically I assume that's coming out of South America? It, it uh, largely either Australia, but mostly um, India. Really? India, yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's a significant challenge in that it comes in way under underpriced for for most uh, most proteins here in the U.S. and there's about 140 million water buffalo in the world, so not not really a welcome competitor, especially if they're trying to play it off as our product. Well, that truth in advertising, uh, obviously, the, a lot of folks uh, are interested in that uh, to protect the producer of a product, but ultimately to protect consumers as well. Well, and that's the problem. The consumers being uh, sometimes being duped into believing that it's our product. If uh, if there ends up being a problem, whether it's taste, whether it's quality, um, you know, whatever the, the situation will be, we're going to be the ones with a black eye out of the deal. But particularly for the bison or, or buffalo sector, where you're a market that's still trying to create shelf space uh, and gain uh, pounds consumption within the United States. You bet. We're still in this market and always will be. I, I mean, beef beef does a great job of being beef, and, and we're not going to try and compete with that. We're happy with our own market and, and, and where we're at, but we could, we've got lots and lots of room to grow. Right now, you know, Dave Carter, our executive director, did the math, and we're at 0.08-some pounds of consumption a year. So, you know, if if we triple the size of our, we'd, we'd have enough for everybody in the world to have a quarter pounder one day a year. So there's there's a tremendous upside um, to our industry, and and we we feel very confident that longevity long term is is looking very positive. Thanks, Dwayne. After the break, it's this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. Stay with us. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Farm Bureau update. My name is Jackie Munt and I represent the 7th District on the Vote FBF Board. So now more than ever, this is going to be our last election before um, we have the, the census redistricting. Um, there's more people who are in urban areas and less people who are going to be in rural areas and have that firsthand understanding of what it's like to be on a farm and the issues that are there. And so it's really important for us to have people who engage in the process and speak up about what's important um, to one of the most important industries in our state. And so I think that people getting out um, in this election cycle, which Again, all of the races almost are on the table. So we've got 125 uh, House races, we've got 40 Senate races, uh, we've got our federal races, 
um, all four of the House districts as well as a Senate seat up. And so this is a great time to, to speak up and say, agriculture is an important industry in our state, and we want to be able to continue to have family farms and ranches. And so we need people who, even if they don't have a farming background, are willing to be engaged in the process. And that's why our members need to make their voices known, which they historically have been very strong. We want to keep that strength up so that people see us as the voice of agriculture. After the break, find out what the Animal Agricultural Alliance is and their role in the industry. That's next, here on Farm Factor. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Let's go to Dwayne Taves, who is talking with Hannah thompson Weeman about the Animal Agriculture Alliance. Dwayne Tanks joining you once again with Ag AM in Kansas and an opportunity to catch up with Hannah Thompson Weeman with the Agric uh, Agriculture Anim Animal Agriculture Alliance. So we'll get it right yet. Hannah, talking about uh, your job and uh, the, what the Alliance does. Certainly it's uh, a different world than it was 20 years ago when we turned uh, uh, terms of activism, uh, animal welfare, animal rights, and differentiating between those. Talk a little about the organization and what you hope to accomplish. The Alliance has been around since 1987, and in those three decades, we have seen a lot of different things happen in terms of consumer perception of animal agriculture, in terms of activism. Our role at the Alliance is to bridge the communication gap between farm to fork. Our, we bring together everyone in animal agriculture, from farmers and ranchers, to associations, to companies, so that we can speak with a united voice on behalf of the industry on issues that impact all of us. Uh, we have the full spectrum of folks involved covering every segment of animal agriculture, uh, from the crop side, that's obviously very, impor very important to animal feed, animal health, again, the commodities themselves, and that's who we work to bring together so we can talk about issues and figure out how we can all work collaboratively collaboratively for the better of the industry as a whole. Our primary issue has been from the start animal welfare. So how are animals raised? What do consumers know? What do they understand about animal care on farms. More and more today, however, we're pulled in a few different directions as there are a couple other hot button issues really heating up. As part of animal welfare is the conversation around responsible antibiotic use. So how are antibiotics used on farms? How does that impact food safety, human health? And then over the past few years, sustainability has been increasingly important. So the environmental impact of animal agriculture, do people understand what it actually is? It tends to get exaggerated quite a bit and activist groups will call for people to eliminate meat, dairy, and eggs from their diet in order to save the planet. And as part of that, there are some arguments made about the nutritional value of these products. So those are a few of the hot issues that we work on and we just want to make sure that consumers and influencers have balanced and accurate information as they make decisions about what they're going to feed their families. Talking about that, uh, you referenced uh, balanced and accurate information. I think from the majority of people in agriculture's perspective, we just like to see some sound science uh, utilized in, in making these decisions. 
Agriculture is a very scientifically based industry and we do have science on our side, but something that we can't forget is the emotional connection that people have with their food. It's not just about the science anymore. People take for granted, they know their food is going to be safe, they know it's going to be affordable and available to them, so they're kind of taking their relationship with food and farming to a higher level. They want to know how it was grown, how it was produced, does that align with their values? So for us in agriculture, it means we have to go beyond the science. Of course, we want to make sure everything we say has a basis in science, is supported by science, but we need to make sure we're finding shared values with our consumers and reassuring them that our products are responsibly produced. They're safe and ethical to consume, and they can be a part of their balanced and healthy diet. We've got to make sure we're reaching people as people on a personal level versus just throwing statistics out there. You talk about that personal connection, uh, more producers uh, in agriculture uh, all the time are trying to make that connection. Some are more comfortable in doing that than others, but you guys have some outreach tools as well. We feel at the Alliance that communication, I know it isn't really part of your daily job or your job description as a farmer, it's probably not why you got into farming, but if you want to ensure your freedom to operate, that you still have customers who are confident in buying your product, you have to be part of this conversation and step up and be present in your community, whether that's through in-person engagement or doing things online, because your voice as a farmer and rancher who's actually on the front lines of this, it resonates so much more with consumers and is so much so very trusted even in comparison to an organization like the Alliance so we do a lot of work to try to empower everyone from college agriculture students through our college Aggies online scholarship program that's been around quite a while to a new initiative we're launching called animal ag allies uh, that program will be in place to help farmers and ranchers who are interested in doing this they've already started making some efforts in this area but really could use some help taking their outreach to the next level it'll involve some online training modules and then an ongoing discussion forum where we can support one another, brainstorm, share ideas, and share resources so we can all be part of this conversation together. And you've got a great uh, website resource as well. We actually just launched a brand new redesign of our website, so we put a lot of our resources much more easily in the hands of both curious consumers and farmers and ag advocates who want to be part of some of these conversations. Uh, our website is at animalagalliance.org, and it has everything from resources on sustainability, animal welfare, those type of hot topics, and also some resources to help the industry understand activism. Um, while we need to focus on our consumer and that movable middle, we can't neglect to pay attention to the extreme voices out there and the impact they're trying to have on our industry. So our website, animalagalliance.org, really covers that whole spectrum and has a lot of very useful resources for everyone from farmers to grocery shoppers. Our thanks to Hannah with the Animal Ag Alliance joining us on Ag AM in Kansas. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after the break as Daryl Peel talks about what we learned from the effects of COVID-19 on the beef supply industry. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. No one plans to get sick or injured, but when life happens, it's important you and your family are protected. Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans are there to provide continued health care coverage to meet your needs. Choose from a broad range of individual and family plans. And if you're over 65, we have options for you too. Learn more at kfbhealthplans.com or contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Welcome back to Farm Factor. Daryl Peel discusses the recent turmoil in cattle markets and what the markets have done to recover. The cattle market evolves, sometimes abruptly, in response to dramatic events. Effects of the COVID-19 pandemic were foreshadowed late last summer. We obviously have, uh, you know, short-run impacts, uh, you know, like the, the, the uh, fire in Kansas uh, in August of, of 2019. Uh, you know, what that really illustrates to me is just how 
uh, how uh, vulnerable in some sense that we are in this industry to that supply chain that's out there. It's a perishable product. We're moving, you know, if you take an average uh, of, of annual production, over 500 million pounds of product a week through this industry. And any sort of significant and unexpected disruption like that causes major market reaction. Based on a single location then, and greatly magnified this spring, system-wide, chaos entered the cattle markets. It generated a lot of discussion, obviously, about what happened both on the uh, the, the the wholesale meats meat side, what happened to cutout values and 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 you know implications for packer margins, at least for a brief period of time, as well as on the on the uh, on the supply side in terms of fed cattle. So it it did a lot of things that uh, people talked about. It also illustrated very well how markets work, and markets will fix a a very severe shock like that, but but sometimes the way it gets done is, is in a way that we're not really uh, very happy with. While Congress looks into legislation to address the unhappiness, Peel says there are still bright spots in the market, from exports to quality improvement and new products. People that had never used Prime now found that it was available. And so, so you saw some changes there. Uh, the choice uh, Prime spread got narrow for a while when there was a lot of supply of Prime, but then again, other people sort of jump on it and, and, and some new markets developed that really didn't exist traditionally. And so again, those are all the kinds of dynamics that really play into this broader discussion of what's going on with demand in terms of quality as well as across different products. Peel also says prime and choice as a percentage of production has averaged more than 85 percent since late last year and will likely remain record high while the industry works through the supply situation. Recent homebound consumer buying patterns might accelerate development of convenience products. Home meal kits, the Grubhub, DoorDash, uh, you know, kind of kind of concept imply a lot of additional fabrication. Let's say a particular steak product that they use in-house, but they found that when they do home delivery, you've got a time lag. So in some cases, they've actually had to switch to a different cut of meat that had a slightly different moisture content. There's a lot of dynamics. There's a lot of interest in trying it. I think there's some real questions in some cases about the, the, uh, the, the follow-through demand on those markets, either from a quality standpoint or from a price standpoint or, or whatever. And so that changes some of those price relationships that they have counted on historically, especially, especially seasonal price patterns, um, you get more blurring between the food service and retail lines now. Regardless of ongoing or pending changes, the dynamic beef cattle markets will adjust. I'm Bob Cervera. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Plain Talk. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Let us help feed your family. Welcome back. Now let's see what Colin Duane are up to on Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk. Talk with the guy that always says opportunities multiply if you seize them, Dwayne Taves. Mm, I thought you were going to say they only mm. knock once. <laughs> oh, no, they knock every day. <laughs> they knock every day. They every day. It's a different There's opportunity an, that's exactly knocking. Not the same opportunity, but if you missed the last one, grab the next one. Grab a hold. Take a stand. Take even a chance. If, even if it didn't work out, it'll probably work out. Your fact or fiction question of the day, Kyle Bauer. Four different civilizations invented handwriting independently. Fact or fiction? Hmm. You know, it just amazes me how all the languages around the world, I mean, everybody there's developed a lot of different them. Ones. Like, yes. Yeah. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of them, even within 
countries today, there will be dozens. Um, four at the, completely separate and apart wrote hand. Yeah, I'll go with true. That's what it says. I'll it, bet there was at least that many. Egyptians, Sumerians, Chinese, and Mayans. I was going to go Chinese and Egyptians, but I couldn't get the others, the Mayans. So, okay. of course, er, most everyone knows how come all of them did is because we had ancient aliens that was <laughs> that told them how to do things. Told them how to do it? Yeah. The Mayans, though, they, they had that calendar that was bad. It wasn't bad. It just they ran just out. They just got tired of writing. <laughs> and they, just, they, they said, that's far enough. We don't need and, to go and any then further. somebody decided, oh... The calendar ran out, so it must be the end of the world. And they're going, no, our hand just got tired of writing. That old boy died. Nobody <laughs> ever got back he to He never writing. trained anybody up behind him to be writing out the calendar. Well, and besides that, you know, the Mayans at this point, you know, they're not near as picky well, as they used to be. Well, they're somewhat insignificant at this well, point. Don't tell the Mayans that. <laughs> well, you don't hear a lot about them. Well, that's just it. They don't have a good PR person. But... <laughs> didn't hire the right PR firm. Okay, well, you're of German ancestry. Yes. Well, don't you think there's probably people around the world, if not just in Mexico and Central America, that are Mayan ancestry? I assume. So if you're listening to this well, show right now, of, Dwayne Taves is the sure one. I'm sure the Mayans, did they not go... Go what? Extinct? Yeah. Was it the no. Incas or the Mayans? I don't think they went extinct. Their I culture that was part did. part of history. Their culture did. You think somebody snuck out and lived on in another culture? I don't think they annihilated and exterminated every one of them. I think that they probably were a conquered people. Yeah? Yeah. And somebody so, else took over and we, yeah. didn't, we didn't Mayan anymore. We... <laughs> We conquistadored. Well, exactly. Or, you know, just we just became a Mexican or a, um, what's the next, Guatemalan or whatever. So, huh. so I don't know. I just don't think that, no, I don't think they were Maybe our super fact check guy will flash that up there as to yeah, whether well, there just, are any the fact, Mayan fact descendants. Check guy, by the way, make sure you get it right as to who thinks they're still Mayans. And I don't thinks, know. And I think they're still Aztecs, too. By the way... That's one of the things that I didn't get to do when we um, went to southern Mexico a few years ago is I wanted to go see the pyramids. The uh, ruins? The, the ruins, if you will. And, okay, now, since there is an ancient aliens right there, how come there's pyramids in Egypt and they have a written language and there's pyramids in Central America and they had a written language? And, and then we have that big old wall in China and they had a written language. Coincidence? I don't think so. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.